Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Ridgefield Crystal Lake Presbyterian Church. Welcome to you both here in the sanctuary and to those who are joining us online this morning. My name is Pastor Nicole Malera, serving as interim pastor here at Ricklepick, and I am glad to be with you as we give thanks for the passing of Christmas, the Christmas season 2023, and welcome in the season of Epiphany. A few things as we begin our time together this morning. Please take a moment to sign the red friendship pads that you find at the end of your pew. Sign them and pass them along to your neighbors. They're a great way for us to know who's with us in worship today and if there are any pastoral needs in the congregation. Today is a communion Sunday when we gather at the table and share a moment of rest with the Lord. If you are worshiping at home, we trust the Holy Spirit to guide you toward elements fitting for a communion celebration later in the service. And here in the sanctuary, we are practicing open communion where all are welcome to join. This morning, I wanted to lift up a word of gratitude to everyone who lent a hand and provided comfort to Cheryl Brink's family and friends at her memorial service yesterday. Cheryl was much beloved as evidenced by the folks who came out to remember her and our church family really stepped up and provided care and hospitality to a family. Um, I know that they were deeply moved by the presence and the hard work that everyone gave, and I am thankful for the compassion and attention and care that you all provided. Thank you. I have an update this morning from Bev Kerman. We've been praying for her friend Diana, who has been suffering from pneumonia and RSV. Diana has now been placed on home hospice. So as we continue to hold Diana in prayer, Bev would like to remind us to seek out available vaccinations to maintain our own health as much suffering is preventable. So please continue to keep Diana in prayer today and take good care of yourself too. One final note I'd like to share with you. With the holidays now behind us, hmm, the discerning work of the interim time can now begin in earnest. Hmm. In the coming weeks and months, we will be putting a greater focus on the life of the church here, seeking to clarify this congregation's call and purpose and addressing some of the infrastructure issues that have been present and uh, more, even more recently emerged. It is a big job, but it is a good job with plenty of opportunity to walk a little closer with the Spirit. So that time is ahead of us, and I ask that you please watch my Tuesday letters and other church correspondence as the good Lord continues to grow and shape us. I would invite you now to center yourselves, to find in this moment your connection to the holy, to find God's Spirit moving in us and through us, already present to us and alive in this space. And as you are able, please rise in body or in spirit and join me in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. A new day has dawned. A new year has begun. The world turns to hopes and dreams of the future. O oh Lord, with bright stars and small twinkles, be a light to our path. We enter this new year with hope and excitement. Lord, remind us to follow your lead. Lord of all, be our guide as we look to you in this new year. Bless our service. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 150, As With Gladness, Men of Old.
as we begin the new, let us lift up old hurts and old sins, the old ways, that we might be born as new creations in Christ. In the hope of new beginnings, let us come before God and before one another in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Gracious God, we would like to be among those who saw the Christ child, those who dropped everything and traveled to the newborn king. And yet, merciful God, we recognize all the time we are more like Herod when we act out of fear and insecurity, when we prioritize our own need for control over the survival needs of others in these times, we fail to live your promises and turn our backs on trust. Loving God, we confess our sins before you and one another, and we pray that you will heal us in this new year and fill us with your light. In the name of Christ, the one who lights our way, we pray. Amen. present in the Christ child, born to lead us out of darkness, present in the star and all that guides us to love. God's light is in the world, and the darkness did not overcome it. God's grace is in the world, and our missteps will not overcome it. We are loved. We are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us Spend this time sharing peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Also and also with you. with you. All right. Peace. 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 Good morning. Peace. Let us, let us share peace with those at home who are joining us online. Peace.
Our first scripture reading for today is from the prophecies of Isaiah, the 60th chapter, the first through seventh verses. Listen for the word of God. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people's But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you. They shall be acceptable on my altar, and I will glorify my glorious house. Amen. All right, so today, anyone who feels like a child or wants to act like a child and play a game with me, come on over here, because it's going to be a fun game. I'm surprised. Is Fred not here today? He normally comes when I give that opening. (laughs) Oh, there he is. All right. So this is a very simple game. I gotta face you guys, or I'm gonna stand here. You guys all stand up. All right, and so you gotta look at me. You can stand, you can stand, right? So here's how the game works. Tell me when the light is on. All right, now, you have to tell me by dancing. If the light is on, you dance. If the light is off, you stop dancing. It's like freeze dance. Are we ready? All right, everybody stand up. I think we got the idea. These guys did a great job teaching you how it works. When the light is on, you dance. When the light is off, you freeze. (laughs) And now, Scott, you got that all in film, right? (laughs) Excellent. All right, have a seat. You see, it's very easy for us to follow a light. They're bright. Even even in a non-dark room like this, we could all see that light, right? And it is so simple. And the cool thing is we all have one of these in, in our pockets most of the time. And if you actually find yourself in a dark space, you pull it out, and you can see, and it guides you. In the scripture we just heard, what were they saying about following a light. What did they talk about? Following the direction. Mm. No. Fred, we might need your expertise on this one. <laughs> oh, there's a light coming into the world, and the thick, the darkness will be very thick, but the light will pierce the darkness. So the light is more powerful. In our next reading, we get to hear again about how the wise men followed a star and there's a king and he wanted to know all about it. Like, how'd you follow this star? Where'd you see it? And it's like, it was bright. It was in the sky. It was like the biggest thing there was. It pierced the darkness. That's a good use of words, Fred. And so here we are, right? And one of the things that always is struggling is we're thousands of years after the Bible was written, right? So what does this mean for us? What light do we follow 
that isn't on a cell phone. All right, you can follow a Pikachu. I'm not sure if that's gonna lead you to salvation. All right. <laughs> what is a light that we could follow? Tell me one. Uh, the sun. Follow the sun? Mm -hmm. And who created the sun? God did. So we could follow lights that God provides for us. And sometimes it doesn't actually have to be a literal light. Fred is sometimes my guiding light. When he says, you know what, Anthony, you're trying to make a stop and it sounds like garbage. How about I just build you some boxes? I say, Fred, you just made this church so much better because we have stomp boxes now for the choir. Right? Sometimes Cece is my guiding light when she can't actually speak about things, but just kindly comes and gives people's hugs and kisses, right? The innocence of not knowing any different than love for everything, right? Everyone in this church could be our guiding light in our faith journey. And if you're alone, where can you find the words of Christ to be your guiding light? If you're all by yourself and you don't have a person. No? The Bible can still provide guide and light. All around us, through the sun, through physical, actual light switches and flashlights, and then from people and their actions and the word written down, we have ways to follow Christ as guide and lights. Please have a prayer for me. Dear God, thank you for dancing and fun games. Help us follow your light and guide others with us. Guide others. Amen. Excellent message. Thank you, Anthony. Let's hear about another light, that light that uh, guided the Magi. This is the scripture uh, from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and he learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. When they, heard, when they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come set your rule and reign again, in Christ's in us we pray, unveil while we're made, come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls, Holy Spirit come invade us now, we are your church.
Eternal and loving God, may your word find a place in our minds and a home in our hearts. Amen. Well, last week was New Year's Eve, and uh, I don't know about you, but I was partying like that song sounded like I should be partying. <laughs> Woo, lots of energy. Well, last week was New Year's Eve, and it, it is the one occasion in the year when people are very, very aware of the passage of time. We gather uh, around the world to watch the clock as it ticks from time zone to time zone to time zone from the Sydney Harbor in Australia with its monumental display of fireworks at midnight to the ball drop in Times Square in New York to... Uh, well, I don't know what we do around here. <laughs> well, uh, do we have something that we do? Fire, there's fireworks. Okay, there's fireworks here too. Well, there was a town in Wisconsin, I know that they, they blo dropped a block of cheese. <laughs> and uh, I, I saw Key West, um, there was a, a drag queen descending in a giant high heel shoe, which was pretty festive. Um, I'm happy to report that there were no groundhogs dropped in Woodstock. <laughs> I was wondering. I was out on the square making sure. <laughs> well, whatever it is that gets dropped or exploded on New Year's Eve, wherever you find yourself on God's earth, we are aware on New Year's Eve of the passage of time. But what if you watch the ball drop or the block of cheese fall, and instead of seeing the calendar move from December 31st to January 1, we jumped ahead in time, 10 days, and it was suddenly January 10th of 2024. Well, we'd be in the future from here, for sure. 
That'd be weird. It'd be like a whole week and a half missing. Something like that actually did happen. It happened about 442 years ago. Your ancestors in England and France and Italy and Germany or any place really in the Christian world which followed the Julian calendar went to bed on October 4th, 1582, and they got up to the smell of the coffee on October 15th from October 4th to October 15th. Now, it's not like any days were lopped off of anybody's lifespan or, you know, there was like a space-time continuum thing for my fellow nerds in the congregation this morning. It wasn't that. But the date gap occurred nonetheless. The loss of days was the result of a papal bull issued by Pope Gregory XIII to reform the Julian calendar, which was then in use. His goal was to make the church calendar match the events of solar and lunar cycles necessary for calculating the date of Easter each year. Gregory accomplished that primarily by setting the calendar so that the vernal equinox was always near March 21st, where it had been during the Council of Nicaea in 325 A.D., And this adjustment required moving 10 days of drift that had accumulated in the years since because the Julian calendar years were slightly longer. Initially, the new Gregorian calendar only covered the Catholic Church and the Papal States, but gradually it was adopted almost universally for practical reasons, including international communications and transportation and commerce, all that stuff to get us by the day, and we remain on the Gregorian calendar even now. One man's decision created a before and an after that changed the way the world marks time, all the way to today. And that got me thinking about the many, many ways that any decision we make from one moment to the next, can change things. None of us assembled here today has the power of a papal bull yet. (laughs) Working on it. (laughs) But in the way that we live our lives, in the decisions that we make, we do change ourselves and the world around us. Consider this story that I found. I love this. Consider the ice cream vendor who got caught in a monumental traffic jam on a hot and humid summer afternoon. Hmm? Hot, sticky, generally fed up with the state of things. He finally got out of his truck and he went to the back and he got himself a cold ice cream bar. Mm. Yum. And as he munched standing there at the back of the truck, he realized that in the car idling behind him, Four young children were watching his every bite. (laughs) On impulse, he once more opened the back of the delivery truck and he got out ice cream for those children. Of course, in moments, he was surrounded by a crowd of youngsters as refugees from other stalled vehicles mobbed him. (laughs) By the time the traffic began to move again, the ice cream man had given away four full boxes of ice cream bars, which he had already decided to pay for himself. But when he returned to the factory, he was immediately called into the manager's office. He was probably expecting to be fired, but instead of being fired, the manager smiled and told him it was the best public relations they had received in years. (laughs) Grateful parents had been calling in all afternoon to praise the kindness of the man who had changed a frustrating and unpleasant situation into a moment of delight. One man's decision to change the world around him. Parents' decisions to gratefully call in. A manager's decision not to fire but to offer praise. And those small decisions changed the world, or at least the circumstances of the world on that day. We can call these moments of decision-making mini epiphanies. When a situation in our lives suddenly reveals itself and a decision has to be made, we can choose 
miserly or hot or grumpy or angry or punishing. Or we can choose generosity and grace. In the moments before that decision, one world existed. And in the moments of after, a new creation, a new world, a new experience is made. For the wise men who traveled to see Jesus, there were several before and after moments of many epiphanies before the big reveal of meeting the Christ child. But probably their biggest decision was to heed the signs that they had seen, the whisperings of the universe, the nudges of the spirit to follow the star in the first place, and then listening to the dream that warned them to return a different way. The course of decisions in their lives had led them to map out the stars. Their decidedly non-Gregorian calendar told them to be watching. And when all things were in place, scripture says the star did appear. Could they have waited? Could they have said, oh, hey, new star, just like we thought. We were right, guys. Cool. And stayed home. If that had happened, we sure wouldn't be talking about them today. Our world is different because of that. Their decision to follow the star changed the world, and they carried their news to Herod, who made a terrible decision in response because he responded with fear and violence in the massacre of the innocents to root out this new king who threatened him. There was a world before and a world after that decision, too. The Magi's decision to follow the star had good after effects as well. The good news of Christ's birth was shared in the Gentile world. And as the Holy Family fled to Egypt, they carried the reality of the Messiah with them. For each life touched in this story, a before and an after existed. Do we have a before and after story in our own lives? Yes, we do. There was a time before we were open to Christ's spirit. And there was a time after. If we don't have a particular moment when our own personal epiphanies occurred, maybe they're there in the gathered stories of our faith journeys. Our own accumulated decisions to follow the star, to make the next right move, to make the kindest, most gracious decisions that we can make, the most Christian decisions that we could make in the moment. I think of my own faith journey as a pile of epiphanies. And there's a lot of them. Where I was open to learning what decisions I made that were growing Christ's kingdom and maybe even where I went wrong. But the big decision, the one to follow Christ in the first place, has had the biggest impact on my life. And in the ever so small changes in the world around me, that decision is felt. Listen, I'll, not to feed my ego, but there was a whole different world before Nicole in Christ. There is a different one after Nicole in Christ. Nicole alone made some pretty sketchy choices. Ask my mother. <laughs> Nicole in Christ manages a whole lot better. And decisions now are made with the hope of doing some good, of glorifying God, building Christ's kingdom, alleviating some suffering in the world. That's my guiding star. That's where I make my decisions. And only Nicole in Christ can do that. Nicole alone would be sleeping Sunday morning. <laughs> I don't always get it right, but I find grace for missteps a lot easier to manage. I think the greatest blessing has been that Nicole in Christ doesn't have to build the next moment's world alone. Don't have to. 
I can build each new moment, each new world alongside saints and angels with the Holy Spirit. And for that opportunity, I am eternally grateful. And I think the same is true of each of us. There is a world before you place your name here in Christ that makes a decision and a one after before you place your name here in Christ. So at the start of this new year, I would like to invite you to welcome Christ and God's spirit of love into all of your decision-making. Recommit yourselves to seeking and finding decisions based in love for before and after different worlds exist. And I think you can tell where the star might be guiding you. As we go through any decision in goodness and kindness and in generosity, know that the Spirit of Christ is with us in this new year, blessing our steps as we make our way toward him. May our epiphanies abound. To his glory and in his name. Amen. Gold and frankincense and myrrh, these were the gifts that were brought by those seeking magi of long ago. And we know that as we are seeking, we will always be met with the grace and goodness of our steadfast God made manifest in Christ the Lord. So with thanksgiving in our hearts, let us come before God with our tithes and our offerings. Let us remain seated now and join together in our prayer of dedication. Ever present God, today we dedicate our gifts, our year, our decisions, and our very selves to you. Take what we bring and create new opportunities for goodness to the glory of your kingdom eternal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
We make the decision in each heart to follow God's voice in the world. We gather with all the sages and the seekers, the sinners and the saints in this holy meal. Come to Christ's table, for all are welcome here. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Lord, for all of us, the entire future is unknown. Help us to make the decision to have faith and to trust in you. Help us to find the wisdom to do the right thing and to be guided by you constantly. Make your voice clear in our decisions, and when we don't hear well or act from our own egos only, let us know and help us to share in grace. Help our decisions to create a new world with you. Let our work and our epiphanies create Christ's kingdom in us and all around. Remind us, Lord, that you always keep your promises and remind us, too, that they are kept in your time and not in ours. Still, we lay this new year before you and ask your blessing. We lift up our loved ones and we pray for them, for our family, for our friends, for all whom we know, and bless those who are unknown to us but known to you wherever the deepest needs are felt. Bless also our enemies that humanity might be remembered and send special comfort today to those in hurting bodies and hurting minds. For us and for our church, help us to hear your voice in the work ahead as moment by moment a new creation is born, a new epiphany realized, and a new world created. In this interim season of growth, may others see your love shine through us May our words and actions constantly point to you. May we put you first in everything and serve you always. Join our hearts now as we join our voices, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, On that night, a decision had been made. There was a moment before and a moment after. But in the midst of that moment, Jesus gathered with his disciples for a meal. And he took the bread, and he gave thanks for it, and he broke it. And he shared it with his disciples, and he said, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup and he poured it out saying, this cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you eat this bread or drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. We ask that you be with us at this table, Lord, known in this bread and in this cup. Send your spirit upon us and upon these elements that they might be our strength and reminders of your constant presence with us throughout this year and all time. Amen. Friends, this is the feast of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are now ready.
Lord Jesus.